How about mixed numbers? Once you decide whether you have common denominators or not, what is one way of adding and subtracting mixed numbers? So, like, Well, should I make up numbers? So like if there's like a three and four, but anyway, you take the bottom denominator, times it by the mixed number, and then add what the Yeah, you're going to take the denominator. Oh, it's not up here anymore, is it? I don't have one here. You're going to take the denominator, you're going to multiply it by the whole number, and then you're going to add the numerator. So that's one way to get started. You don't have to follow that, but you may. Here, let me show you something. Some of you may or may not understand why that is. It's 4 times 3 plus 1, right? Yeah. So 4 times 3 plus 1 is 13, and then it's over 4. So we're saying that this is the same as 13 fourths. And, and here's why. If I draw a picture of 3 and a 4 with circles, there's one hole, there's two holes, there's three holes, and then there's a fourth. Is that okay? Yes. You know, kind of, it's like this. Ooh, that's really not so good. But this is better. That's what I'm saying. There's one fourth, and these, these three fourths are not a part of it. So one, two, three, and a fourth. Well, if I take this one and I divide it into fourths, how many fourths is that? Audrey, you should look up your two. Well, it's four fourths. And how many more fourths? One, three, eight. One, two, three, four. And four more makes eight. eight. And then four more makes twelve. Plus one. Three fours plus one. So that comes from. So you know this right here is is the number one written as fourths. So is this, as is this, and here's my one fourth. If you add all of that together, here's three sets of four, plus one, so That's where this idea comes from in picturing our fractions of whole numbers. So shall we then just move on? Mm -hmm. What do you think? You have to keep your face covering that. So just like I talked to James at the beginning of the hour, all right? Yeah. Mitigation is only effective when we use it. Just like going outside. Yeah. Here. So here's your COVID lesson for today. Yeah. Uh, you get COVID lessons every day now. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Let's get that mask is not 100% effective, is it? No. They say it's about a third to a half effective. What about that one? That one's high. That one's like 95 over 95 one hundredths. Oh my. That's why they call it an N95. But it's a whole different game. And, and they're hard to come by, too. They're not real easy. But there's a, there's a reason that Miss Lupin, I'll deal with this. There's a reason that Miss Laurie is wearing that. Is because as you've heard with COVID, some people, if they get COVID, are going to be affected much worse than others. And it's elderly, people that are not in as good of general health, who may be weak. I mean, there's a whole list, people with diabetes, and, on, and people that have respiratory ailments. And Miss Laurie has asthma. So asthma is something where the passages into the lungs in certain conditions can tighten up yeah. and they get small. And then all of a sudden, instead of breathing like we do, a person with asthma might experience a situation where it's not free breathing. It's like they're breathing through a straw, <laughs> through a very, very small opening. And if, and if a person gets COVID, which is a respiratory ailment, it can trigger that asthma to be much, much more severe, much more frequent. And that, that, can, be, that can be a real concern for that person's overall health. So if I get COVID or Miss Lori gets COVID, 
it's going to be different. It could be different because Ms. Lori might experience much more severe, a severe reaction to the illness. So she's upping her level of mitigation. She's got to be more careful than I do. So a regular mask. Yeah, James. How much does a face shield give you? Face shield is really, really low. Because it, there's like, it's open right yeah. here. It's just to stop you yeah, from spinning. A, what a face shield can do is it can catch some of the droplets that come out of your mouth and they, 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 they land on the face shield, but you got this big opening around it. Or if you wear one of those and a face shield. Then, yeah, that's what I'm talking about here. So like, let's, let's do this here. Your mask, let's say your mask is one third effective. And then, is this thing going? Yeah, the filter. So by having a filter, by moving air, when we could have the windows open when it was warmer outside, that ends up being another effective layer. And I'm just going to throw these numbers out, but let's just say that that effective layer was like um, quarter, eight, one tenth effective. And then we have something like the filtration in the building. Do you know that the filters in the building are much different than what are normally here? Yeah. This year they put in filters that are much like what they have in hospitals and clinics. Filters out more particles. Got to keep it on continuously, otherwise that, that, that number gets smaller and smaller. So the filtration in the building is going to be something like this. It's going to greatly improve that along with the HEPA filters. And they take all of these layers and what they do is they multiply them together. Yeah, so, so if we just look at this right here, well, then we have social distancing, right? We, we're staying five, six feet apart. Mm, not, really. not really. In this situation, we are. And you know, you sit here for an hour, right? If you were sitting this close for an hour, that would be much different than if you're six feet apart. Well, we usually sit like this in regular classrooms, like, oh. every usually. We're usually about the same apart. I yeah. sit, I teach in the, in, in your small class, you may, but I teach in the library, my geometry and my uh, eighth grade math classes are up around 20 or so students. And in this room here, imagine doubling how many of you there are, then you'd be this far apart. So we are spreading ourselves apart. And by doing that, that's like having another layer of mitigation. So we have another fraction in here. And so maybe having that six feet out there, maybe what that does is something like this here, again. So, so every one of these is a layer that removes the probability of transmitting or passing COVID from one person to another. So it actually, so, if you had all of those, it would be over four. Well, we don't get to really add them together. They get multiplied. And they get multiplied. So if it's a one third protection, that means it's a two thirds chance of getting it. If it's a one tenth protection, that's a nine tenths chance of getting it. If it's a half protection, that's a half chance of getting it and half again. So this is all this multiplication here would be the chances of getting. COVID passed on if it was in the room. So we just multiply 18. 18. 30 times 2 is? Times 4. Or 30 times 4 is 120. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that that's equal to 9 over 60. That's pretty, that's pretty unaffected. Which, if this was a 10, that would be about 1 6th. A one sixth chance because we have multiples like this. But let's just do this. What if you just have a mask? Then there's still a two thirds chance of getting it. That's a lot bigger chance than one sixth, isn't it? See, one sixth would be like. Oh, I thought you meant like that was the chance we could get it. Like, no. Yeah, it is one sixth. Well, those are sixths. Not very good sixths. But either way, that's a one sixth of getting it versus if you were just wearing a mask, maybe that much. 
So each one of these protection layers is like a, it's kind of like a filter of passing it on. A little bit more. And as soon as, as soon as we remove one of those, as soon as you don't run the fan in the room, as soon as you stay really close together, as soon as you don't wear your mask, then the chances go up. What happens if you sniff someone like your Biden that has to like, what is your question? What if you sniff someone like Joe Biden <laughs> and if they have COVID? So is that a serious question or are you trying to be funny? He actually well, sniffs people. Excuse me. Well, if you me. sniff right next to him and they have COVID, would you get COVID? Okay, so you don't have to say, you don't have to name somebody like that to try to turn it into a joke if it's a serious question. So if you, if you breathe real close to somebody who has COVID, your chances are, of course, are much higher. Hmm. But only if you spend like 15 minutes with that person. So what if you like walked by him in an airport or something? Not very likely. If you walk, who, who walked so, someone So here, here's the other thing, in the bigger cities, if you go into the grocery Find stores, it. if you go into the grocery stores in the bigger cities, they will have it set up where they're asking you to go down the aisles of the grocery store and everyone moves in the same direction. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they have that even set up at, at Juno, at, uh, at the Safeway in Juno. They're asking people to go the same direction. And then they're also asking people to stay six feet apart when they do that. Mm -hmm. And the idea is they don't want everyone lingering up close around maybe all the cereal at the same time or you know, everyone getting their oranges at the same time. Because it, it's, all, it's all about the amount of time that you spend up close. Those are all mitigation they call them mitigation factors because they multiply together to determine what the risk is. And a factor is a number that multiplies another number. So yeah, they, there's math out there. Lots of them. Right. I was in um, Washington. I was in State. Yeah. And I think that's, that's part of why the cities are experiencing what they are, many of the cities. Because people are really close and they, in order to function they just end up being close. It's not like Ames, where we have lots of space. And you get up early in the morning and go to the grocery store and there might only be you know, three or four other people in the whole place. So you mean Ames has hundreds of thousands of people in it? Yeah. Again, are you trying to be funny or are you making a mistake in the population count? So when we talk about serious things, it's good to keep it serious. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like, was he joking or was that serious? Okay. So that's what I try to do. Okay. Let's go on to solve the equations with back to triangles. So the big difference here with these back to triangles is that now, instead of having three numbers, one of the corners might be a variable. One of the corners might be a variable. We always do is take the number at the top and minus it by the number you have. Let's see, let's see how this all works together here. Got to zoom so that maybe if Ava does watch this. Zoom. Um, no offense, Ava, but I feel like she wouldn't. Yeah, I know. It's kind of funny. You think not. And then all of a sudden I find out certain people are on it all the time watching them. Like who? Like this is a, the, knowing Ava, this, she probably wouldn't. Let, no, she's probably let's lay off, down. okay? Let's stay focused here. Um, this isn't coming in well, but what I'm on is this is the Google Doc. So I'm, at, I'm looking at the Google Doc that I have. Okay, so let's see here. This is not pointing in the best direction. Okay, we'll work with this. Okay, so here's some vocabulary. One of the vocabulary words which is big here is equation. We've heard the word expression, but we need to know the difference between expression and equation to understand the questions that are being asked. There will be sides of an equation, we'll show you that, and variable you know, and then something, what is an open sentence? We'll learn what that is. We'll learn the idea of solving an equation, what that means. And then this is an important word, the word solution. Ooh, I guess 
I got to be careful with this. Yeah, it's not too so I'm going to let this go this way. Are you focused with me? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I didn't want to unfold this. Do you guys have your books? Right. Could you open up? 4-8. Or 8 I know, friend. Well, why is are you staring yeah, at me? What page number are you on? Uh, yeah, we're really nice. Could we all open up to that? 249. Yeah. Okay. So so you see they've got a couple of they've got a couple of triangles here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to produce them up here. I'd like you to take a look at these. Uh, for question number one though, they say 10 is equal to negative 2.5 plus x. So this right here, this is an example of an equation because it has an equal sign. So they're saying that 10 is equal to negative two and a half plus some number. What, what, if, what would be the number that we would add to a negative two and a half to make it to 10? Seven and a half, I think. Okay, well, there's a couple of ways of picturing this. Take a look at this one. If you were to start here at negative 2.5, so this is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we have to get from a negative 2 and a half all the way to 10. So if we count on a number line, so from negative 2 and a half to negative 2 is a difference of a half. So how many more ones is it to get to 10 from negative 2? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. So this is a length of 12 and a half. So here we can use a model to figure out that this solution for x is going to be 12 and a half, hopefully. So in this case here, if I put 12 and a half in, Add the negative two and a half, we get ten. So this is a solution because it works. It works to make it a true statement. What's another way? Another way to model this? Yes. Well, there's a bunch of ways to model this one. We could do it with a fact triangle. So this is jumping ahead, but remember we put a number into each corner. Yeah. And the bottom two would have to add to make the top as an answer. So if we took this one right here, 10 is equal to negative 2 and a half plus x. And then x would be equal. So down in the bottom, we have a negative 2 and a half. And then x. This would be adding on the way up, subtracting on the way down. And then that would be 12. This would be 10 on the top. And then the x would be 12.5. The x would be the 12.5, but let's act like we didn't know that and use the fact triangle to figure it out. So you may recall when we wrote tri fact triangles in the past and we had all the numbers in them. Yeah. We would write like little equations. We would say, well, this number plus this number equals that. And then we would also write the related fact that that number subtract this equals x and so on and so forth. So what are the related facts that we could write from this triangle? Let's start out with adding. That's this one, isn't it? Yeah, negative 2 and a half plus 2. Okay, now what else can we write? 10 minus 2. 10 minus 
Minus negative two and a half equals x. What's the other one, James? This is just minus uh, x mm. plus x, sorry. <laughs> well, x minus, minus 10. 2 and a half. Well, negative 2 and a half. Oh, let's hold on. One, one person at a time. Sorry. No, no. You, James, you started saying 10 minus something. Plus x equals negative 2. Well, when we go down, it has to be subtraction. When we take these and go up, that's addition. Well, I know what subtraction minus x is. Ten minus x equals negative. Or you can do x plus negative two and a half. You're right. You could say x plus negative two and a half equals ten. So there's four, and that's the same as this, really. So these two are the addition facts. These two are the subtraction facts. So which of those four can you use to find the solution of what x is equal to? Cruz? Um, you can use the 12.5 plus x equals 10. Um, we're leaving out the 12 and a half because we're acting as though we don't know that right I mean 2.5 equals I mean, 2.5 plus x equals 10. So you could use this. Yeah. You'd have to do a little bit of work in your head, though, right? But you could use it. Mm -hmm. Is there one that might be easier to come up with what the solution is? You're not in your head, were you? Which one do you think would be the easiest to use? <laughs> Minus two, negative two plus five equals x. This one right here, huh? This one right here. Or try first. Try that first. Because you could rewrite the subtraction of a negative as addition. Addition. Let me, let me finish this. By doing that, then you come up with 12 and a half is equal to x. So we can just use all of our operations on one side of the equal side. So I think what the book wants us to be able to see is that we have different ways of viewing this written problem. And by knowing that there are different ways of viewing that problem, we can select the equation that's easiest for us to solve, either in our head or on paper and use that to find out what the solution is. So this is a solution because, again, it works. And that's what we got up here. We got the 12. Thank you. Yeah, I really like that definitely because, like, it's easier than Draw another picture, put this into your notes. I don't know how to draw stick figures. Me too. I know how to draw angles. I know how to draw angles. I know how to draw the belly buttons. I'm just going to draw a line here. T minus 84 seconds. Huh? And then I'm going to draw a ray coming off of that line. That's a linear picture. Ah, linear pair. There you go. No. Um, I'm going to call this angle A. That's that an obtuse angle. angle B. That's an angle. So, what is a general statement that you can make about these two angles? They're yeah. angles. Hold on, somebody I haven't heard from. Uh, oh, I've heard from you a few times. That might be general. Have you heard from me? No, I heard from you, Nolan. Okay, Nolan, what can you say about these two angles? They add up to 180. They add up to 180 because they are a linear pair, and a linear pair is, what's the S word? Oh, super smart. No. Uh, supplementary. Smart. Supplementary. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we can write a statement like this, correct? 
lesson that we got into this, we said that just because an angle looks like it's a certain measure doesn't necessarily mean that it is. Yeah, because so, so here I haven't written what it is. So what I'd like to do is this. I'd like you to make a tea table like this. And I'd like you, excuse me. Get, get your pencil going on this one. Do you have this drawn? Do you have this written? Keep up. Okay. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to write down three combinations of what these angle measures could possibly be. Put that into your T-table. So what are two numbers that could add up to 180 that those two angles could have to measure up? So the whole thing has to add up to 180. So pick one of these numbers. So if A is 90, what is 90? Or what does B have to be? So that it adds up to 180. All right, so I just got this for one possible pair. Focus. What's another possible pair? combinations. So these are sets of numbers that are solutions to this statement. Make a fat triangle. 116. What's going to go at the peak? Uh, a number. 180. James. 180. And then what's in the bottom? A and B. A and B. Thank you, Sarah. Shut the one up, Okay, so let's do this. We have one related fact right here. What's one of the related subtraction facts? Um, a division symbol. Oh. Uh, we're not using division with this one. We haven't done multiplication and division fact triangles yet. So with these three numbers here, the bottom two add up to 180. How do we write a subtraction fact from those three values? Sierra? Minus A. Equals? What's the other one that you could put in there? Mikey? Um, there you go. I don't think it could be 90 because it the top thing would have to be straight to right angle. It would be, but do you guys know what paradigm means? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like when the textbook says what it is or something. A paradigm is a, is a way of thinking, and up until this year, you guys have been really locked in on measuring what an angle actually is. But now we have to start saying to ourselves, well, if, for example, I said that this is equal to 141 and this is equal to 39, regardless of what it measures with a protractor, because it's labeled, we leave it at that, and we accept it, and we do all of our work with those numbers as they're labeled crews. I was talking directly to you. Mikey. 
So you say that that's minus 15? Okay, and write that down. It says later that day the temperature was 3 degrees above zero. So is that positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So what was the change in the temperature? I went up a lot. So, well, they, they give us parts A, B, C, and D. 12 degrees. Excuse me. I'm just reading what the example says here. But we want to keep reading through the whole thing. So when it says, what was the change in temperature, they're going to tell us how they would like us to express this. Sharpen away. OK, so letter A says, using the variable C, write an equation that describes the situation. So when they say, what was the change in temperature, that's going to be C. So this here, this is the change. This value here is the start. And this is the end temperature. So we've got three things here that we have to write an equation with using the variable C. So what's one way that we could be able to do this? Or we would be able to do this? Sarah? Negative 15 plus C equals 3. So this is the starting temperature plus the change equals the ending temperature. Does that make sense? Yeah. Start, change, and it ends. Is there another way to write this same equation? What? C minus C minus 15. But you see that's a negative value, so we would like to use a negative 15 in our equation. Negative we, C. We like to use a 3 and we'd like to use a C. Oh, well, equals. So you're going to say equals 3, but how can we have the number of negative 15 and have the same meaning as this? Negative C. Wouldn't it just be going up by 18? Mm -hmm. Three negative. Um, Rather than subtracting here, what do we have to do? Add. 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 You have so to add, add a negative. negative 15 up to 3, and then you get 18. Should so in this case, it would be the change being added to the starting amount. Still gives us the ending amount. Does that work? Let me just throw a back triangle up here for you. 3, the change, negative 15. So, what are the related facts that we can write with this? We have two facts here, don't we? Mm -hmm. These two numbers added together in mm -hmm. two different orders. All we did was switch them, equals the three. So now how can we come down with subtraction from top to bottom? Negative 15 plus three Are you at me? No, you'll know if I'm looking at it. Like, see? You'll know. Do you know how to write a subtraction from the back triangle? Um, cool. Which number do we start from when we write the subtraction problem? Three. Three? Subtract. Which of these four 
is the most straightforward to find the value of C. I think yeah. Sierra, which one do you think? Three minus negative fifteen. Yeah. Oh, so. Because right here we have both of the numbers on the same side of the equal sign that we work with. So what's three subtract negative fifteen? What does that equal? Subtracting a negative is like adding. addition. So three plus fifteen. It's eighteen. So C equals eighteen degrees. So let's, let's see, does this make sense? If you're at negative 15, here's your thermometer. If you're at negative 15 and it goes up 18, yeah, does that make sense to end up at three? Yeah. try that problem, that one's optional, but if you try it, draw the circles and do your work on paper to try. And then if we get it correct, we get extra credit? I don't give extra credit. Oh, well, I'm not doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll get better hey, grades on your test. You're not hurting me. I know. I'm just hurting my education. It's terrible my education. <laughs> solid 15 minutes of work time. I'd like you to focus on your work and not have any small talk in between you. So I'd like you to focus. Not interrupt one another's focus on them. Yeah, it is. Which is always 
T plus 16, what is T called? Variable. That's a variable. I have my hand up. I know. I'm ready for my old one. 